this is my favorite thing we've done so far. I'm very happy with it and I'm glad that people seem to be enjoying it as well. And we're going to take a look at pretty much everything that is coming in the DLC and in the free patch, but we're not going to get right into all of the gameplay. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice when you're booting up Three Kingdoms after this patch is that we've redone the faction selection screen. We have uh, reworked this screen. We have obviously the, the map screen here where you can see all of the factions and you can scroll it with the different time. But also you notice a faction filter screen that we have at the bottom, oh, yeah. which I think is very convenient and where you can just search by name. And that uh, instead of having to go through the menu, it's a lot nicer to find specific characters that you want to maybe play. So, uh, David, who are the Nanman? So the Nanman are these... Um, these, this group, this cultural group that existed in the southern uh, region of China during this period of time, they're not Han Chinese. They're a different culture group that existed sort of peacefully within the Han Empire for a, for a long time. Um, but then, obviously, with all of the tension and all the events that start happening with you know the Yellow Turban Rebellion in 182, and then you know Dong Zhou and all of that that's happening throughout the 190s, uh, these people start stirring and they start thinking maybe, hey. We could have our own thing then, separate from them. And they start trying to vie for that independence and for the unification of their own sort of kingdom. So, of course, this uh, uh, this area of the map, uh, brand new, redone, tons of new characters added and factions added in. And we have four playable uh, uh, characters coming with uh, the Furious Wild. I saw a lot of people in chat before uh, uh, really hoping we would reveal Meng Wu. Would you say he was, he's sort of historically the, 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 the king of the Nan Man? Historically, the Nan Man never managed to achieve their own kingdom, but he would be the closest thing to that. He was the guy that everyone else looked to when they had problems or when they needed, you know, help resisting. Yeah, Meng Wu is our, our, let's say, archetypal Nan Man faction. He's the, I guess, the recommended one. He's the most, uh, the one that takes the, uh, the least the time to get used to because they are very different from the Han factions. So we have Shamoki, which is how I'm gonna say it here, mm. who uh, he has a very special thing about him. Yes, yeah, so Shamoki is uh, sort of in between the Han Empire and the Nanman. He's the closest to all the other Han factions, which means that he's the only one out of all of the Nanman that can actually declare himself as the Han Emperor. He can take emperor seats, he can unify China into his own, into himself being the emperor, yeah. Then of course we have King Mulu, the shaman. Honestly, he prefers animals to people is probably the best way to describe him. And as you saw in the trailer, um, he rides an elephant and it's awesome. Really cool if you get his fealty as a uh, uh, as another f character um, and you have him within your faction, you, uh, you can actually get uh, some pretty cool events. If you, if you know anything about the novels, you'll know that King Mulu is uh, described to be quite the, uh, the, uh, the magician and the mystic in those books. So you get some of those events as well. And, and then we have Lady Jurong. If you head over to youtube.com slash Total War right now, uh, there's a Let's Play up, which is narrated by yours truly. Don't worry, I'm more eloquent when I am able to write the script. Uh, <laughs> but you can check her out <laughs> and all of her mechanics right there. So we said that Shamoki is the only one that can declare himself uh, Han Emperor. Why is that a big deal? So the Nanman peoples, they're not, as we mentioned before, they're not Han Chinese. So they don't necessarily have an investment in the conflict that exists, you know, with the, the emperor and the three kingdoms and all of that. What they really want is to establish their own kingdom, their own uh, land for themselves. And so their um, campaign is mostly focused on them gaining independence and, and establishing a own solid kingdom that they can build from. That of course means that the victor condition for the, the, the southern tribes is different from any other faction. We're now in the game. We can see very nicely that Nan Man uh, settlements have this nice border around them. With the, uh, the, the victory condition being different, what, what is the primary goal of every Nan Man faction? The tribes individually they can't really uh, compete with, say, a Han faction that has the backing of, of, you know, military tradition and empire and everything else. So what they're mainly trying to do for the first, say, half of the game, they're trying to unify the tribes. The Nanmen are trying to, to prove to each other that I'm worthy of being the ruler. What I think is really interesting about the, um, the fealty mechanic, as we call it, is uh, 
obviously, as you conquer different tribes, you will gain their fealties, you'll gain their, their, their little bonuses and everything. But you can also get it from vassalization or alliances or various other means. So you can, you can unify in various different ways, either by military power or you know, diplomacy. I mean, of course, it is total war. So well, yes. uh, beating, <laughs> beating up everyone is a totally legitimate strategy, but it's not the only strategy. It's really interesting as the as you conquer the different fealties and you start mm. gaining buffs for yourself. Obviously, the AI will also be doing yeah. the exact same thing. So you'll get these big, big challenging power blocks they have to compete with in order to unify the Nanman. So the Nanman characters don't follow the uh, traditional wood and fire and water characters. Instead, you just have the Nanman class, which is that their only single class, and then they can be upgraded in different ways. So all of the Nanman can get different skills as they level up, which will buff their different stats. Mm. And the coolest thing, I think, is their personal goals, which instead of having a skill tree like you do for the Han, where you put different points into a skill tree. Instead, you have to achieve uh, gameplay things. So, for example, uh, win a certain amount of duels in order to unlock a special skill for that character, a special buff for that character. Mm. So you're, you're, um, yeah, you're encouraged to actually go out and achieve these things and these personal goals for these characters. Yes, to, uh, in order to get them to grow. We of course have a new court coming with Naman characters. What's uh, what's special about the uh, the Naman courts? So the Naman court is brand new. All of the positions are new and have different effects. The way in which you progress through the court, the way it expands and 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 uh, as you progress through the game, is also slightly different from the Han. And obviously, it's a lot more. Uh, focused on this kind of tribal sort of feeling as opposed to the bureaucratic kind of uh, Han administration. It's a lot more organic and a lot more wild, if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely. Then, of course, we have the new reform tree. So, obviously, all of the techs are new and different, uh, and they have their own unique effects. Uh, but I think the coolest part about this tech tree is that uh, it uh, plays into this idea of as the Nanman become more unified and they become more of a force to be reckoned with, they have to make choices between embracing a more modern or more Han-like type of, uh, of administration or military strategy or whatever that may be, or they can go and double down on their tradition and say that that's what really sets them apart and that's what really is going to help them uh, win and flourish. And it's an exclusive choice for a lot of the texts where you either go for the modernization or for the traditional type of, uh, of technology, which I think is really cool. Another thing that the tech tree has is uh, instead of just researching them one after the other, as like a, your traditional reform tree for your regular Han factions, for these ones, you have to unlock the different techs with missions. Similar to what we were saying earlier about the characters having to complete missions to unlock skills, mm. here you'll have the different missions that will unlock uh, parts of the tech tree for you. Uh, we have new ancillaries for Nanman characters. Absolutely best of which, I'd say, is the new elephant mount. Of course, Mulu starts oh, with yeah. an elephant. Um, and you, uh, uh, as you could see, we, uh, uh, we were taming some elephants, so maybe that would play into it. Um, but riding an elephant is not just a cosmetic upgrade. It's not like riding a horse. What's, what's different about riding an elephant? So if you equip an elephant mount on your character, you have a completely different uh, playstyle for that character because now they're not this quick and mobile guy on a horse that can go into a duel. They're on a big elephant and they unlock, uh, they can do different things. Obviously, the elephant uh, is very good at charging into large groups of enemies and, and they've got their own special elephant skills. The playstyle for the elephant, for that character, becomes a lot more about the kind of the elephant itself and what the elephant can do with their tamer on top of them. Really cool to see the elephants charging into battle. It's Oh yeah, amazing. absolutely. And I think uh, you can see that in the Let's Play, can't you? Yes. Some, some uh, elephant action in there, yeah. There, There is some elephant on human action in, uh, in, in the Let's Play and it is <laughs> brutal. Elephants aren't the only uh, animals living in these parts of China. Uh, we also have tigers that are part mm -hmm. of the Animal Handler unit, which is one of the new combat units in the expansion pack. There are different types of Animal Handler units. Uh, some are melee, some are ranged, and uh, uh, there are some really cool stuff. Now, speaking of ranged, uh, archers. 
Not a huge thing in, in this region of the world, is it? No, not at all. The um, Nanman pr primarily have different types of ranged mm. units that they use. Uh, for example, uh, instead of having a bow and arrow, someone might throw axes instead or use a blowgun and other different mm. options. So obviously, there's a couple, there's one or two archer units in there, maybe, um, but but their primary type of ranged unit is very different from what you're used to seeing from Indeed. the HOD. Okay, uh, let's see, do we have anything else cool in uh, in the unit uh, department? Uh, something maybe big and, and gray? Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> do, do you understand where I'm going with this? We haven't really... Oh, we I have think to I understand this. where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're a bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have, outside of just the elephant mounts for the leaders, uh, we have uh, war elephants. We have some elephant units in the game that are, that are you know, like a, like a platoon of elephants that charges towards the enemy in battle. And obviously they're very big and they're very scary. Oh, yeah. They're quite surprisingly fast for such big creatures. I guess we're, we'll talk about our free LC character next. Um, I saw some people notice him earlier. We have Shishia. Uh, close enough. Shishia. Shishia. Mm. I don't, I, uh, Governor Shi. He plays very differently to most other Three Kingdoms factions. He's more about the diplomacy and the, the, the uh, relationship business. Yeah, it's very much about diplomacy and, and tribute and gifts and trying to be on everybody's good side and trying to be the good, the good stable guy that's, you know, mm. sort of harm, trying to harmonize with everybody. But he's obviously, if he, see, if he smells blood and if he sees an opportunity, he'll gladly take it as well. Indeed. Is it okay if I, I read in the chat, uh, is it okay if I yeah. answer a question from someone Absolutely. about whether, uh, they are, why they're not available in 182? What we did with the uh, Mandate of Heaven uh, start position, which is the year 182. Uh, you can not start playing the Nanman, uh, but as you play the other factions, you'll start to see that they dynamically start appearing and start fighting for supremacy in their own regions as the game progresses. So they'll start to dynamically appear and populate their own areas of the map and compete against you, maybe. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's why you can't play them. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.